turn to business news now with Giles Beckford, who is beaming in from Wellington, Look, looking just as calm as you like, Giles. There's no adrenaline rushes there when you come on. Oh, I don't have the worries that Barnaby Joyce has, and all, <laughs> and all I can say is that Barnaby Joyce will probably think that being New Zealand born is the least of the problems that he ever had. Excellent. Uh, Giles, Auckland Airport, uh, through which Barnaby Joyce may be travelling in the not too distant future, has turned up with a bumper profit. Indeed, the profits took off today. Uh, it's their half year result. This is a big business. We have to realise that of the near 4 million people who visit New Zealand, about three quarters of them fly through Auckland Airport. 10 million passengers a year in the past six months have gone through there. About uh, just oh, slightly over half of them are foreigners, the rest are domestic. Um, but remember, it's also a really big industrial commercial retail complex. You know, the, the terminals are essentially shopping malls which planes call at and drop off passengers. Mm, mm. Uh, they've got car parks, they've got big warehouses. Uh, at Auckland, of course, they've got the big shopping centre just across from the international terminals. So, and of course, in all of this, they're planning for a second runway in the next decade. So. So um, these are big business. They're struggling to cope with the facilities now with the passengers that they've got. The question mark is that the 160 odd million dollars that they made, uh, they uh, made this past six months, which is up 16% on a year ago, whether that sort of growth can be sustained, uh, given that the expectation is that tourism probably will tail off a bit, that perhaps migration won't be so strong. Uh, and of course, the costs are still there and rising. We'll wait and see, but for the time being, it's uh, a pretty good performing company. Auckland Council must be happy that they held its stake in there. Yeah, and shareholders will be rewarded by an increased interim dividend. And we should note, of course, that we are in the thick of the company reporting season. Next uh, week, uh, we'll have the little shop of horrors that is called Fletcher Building unveiling their full result. We'll also have Air New Zealand and we'll have Spark, the telecommunications company. They're just the notables amongst what's like to be more than a dozen companies reporting. Uh, thanks, Charles. Once people get off the planes at Auckland Airport, they often go and get into camper vans, right? And Tourism Holdings is thinking big about those. They are indeed. Who would have thought that a small company that a few years ago was really struggling with some of its operations, it had uh, various tourist attractions and sort of rental car fleets, but not so big. It's the world's biggest motorhome camper van renter. Uh, and it's now decided to do a joint venture and it's tying up with the world's biggest manufacturer of those sorts of vehicles. Tourism Holdings and is the world's biggest. It is the world's biggest. Holy no, it's got, moly. Right, in, right, in New Zealand we know it as the Brits and Maui brand. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but, but also in the United States a few years ago it bought into a company called El Monte. Uh, if you're in Britain and Europe you will possibly know the Just Go brand and of course they're in Australia as well. And they run a thing called My Way which is a sort of Airbnb of camper vans. I've got my home sitting uh, doing nothing for the next three months. I offer it to a foreign visitor to rent it off me and Tourism Holdings runs the uh, process and does the business between the two of us. Now they're putting all those sorts of things into one digital platform so that in fact they'll uh, be able to uh, look after the bookings, the maintenance, uh, the campsites, uh, whether, whether it's in New Zealand or the States or in Europe. So it's a pretty smart move. It's the way of the future using technology in what you would regard as a pretty ho-hum, humdrum sector, but uh, it's worth around 120 odd million dollars uh, and we'll wait and see if that delivers the goods. This is a rather ambitious company that started from modest beginnings. Um, they've got a good object and a good ambition of making 50 million dollars uh, profit within the next couple of years and I have to say that for a smart Kiwi company, all power to their elbow. Yeah. Um, how did the markets finish the week, Giles? Well, we've had a positive, strong finish to the top 50 index shares, up 62 points, uh, 8125, that's about 0.8%, and we're up about 1.5% for the week. Uh, 74.2 US cents for all the Kiwi and 93.1 Australian. And we'll bring you all the news and the numbers as they're breaking for you next week. Charles Bickford, our business editor, thank you very much. Have a great weekend.